Hey there, this is Jonathan, and in the following tutorial we're going to take a look at setting up complex guides and grids in Illustrator. Now, we would do this because a lot of times in web design and mobile design, we would use some sort of grid system to lay out our page. Now, you'll find a bunch of different ones. They're all over the place. All sorts of different websites have 12 column grids, 16 column grids. Some of them are 1170 pixels wide, some are 1280 pixels wide, some of them are 960 pixels wide. Um, you'll find recommendations all over the place. Exactly what you choose is kind of up to you. It doesn't really matter exactly what the dimensions are because our screen sizes have gotten a lot larger. A lot of people are using screen sizes that are 1980 pixels wide or even larger. 4K monitors are out there. So this kind of grid system, um, you know, what exact sizes you use should be definitely explored, but it's a, still a great tool, whatever size you use, to figure out how to design a page. Let's begin by creating a new document. Now, I'm going to start off with the different web settings that are out here, and you'll see that it gives me some common sizes like 960 pixels or 1200, uh, 1024 or 1280. The exact one you use, once again, is kind of up to you. If I go ahead and use um, one of these as a starting point, I can always change the numbers. I know that 1440 is fairly common um, as a page width to design with, um, and I'm definitely going to make this thing a little bit larger. So I might even make this like 2,000 pixels tall because I'm going to do a pretty tall design in this. Now, we do want to open up the advanced tablet so that we can see our tab so that we can see um, the uh, RGB settings and then also align new objects to the pixel grid. That's very important when you're doing screen um, graphics. All right, so now I have a pretty large page and uh, I'm going to begin by creating a rectangle. Now with this rectangle, I'm not going to worry too much when I first draw it because I'm going to go up here and change the numbers to what I want. And so the width that I'm going to use is going to be, oh, who knows, uh, let's do the 1170. Some people say that that's a good recommendation. And I'm also going to change the height to be exactly what I want. I know that my header is only going to be 300 pixels tall. So right now I've got 1170 pixels wide, 300 pixels tall. And what we want to do is align this to the artboard and center it. That way, we know that when we create our guides, they'll fit exactly that. Now, I might also take this header all the way up to the very top as well. And that's where I want to start my guide system. To split this up into guides, you might think that you would actually go over to the guides and create new ones here. But that's actually not where we're going to do it. We're going to go over to Object, Path, Split into Grid. Now, with the current box that we have selected, we can split that into whatever um, grids and columns that we want, which is really awesome. If I split this into 12 columns and I preview it, you'll see it's going to split that one box into 12 individual boxes. It's pretty cool. In fact, if I switch around the color, you can even see this more obvious. Let me go to Object, Path, Split into Grid, change this to 12, and hit the preview and now you'll see it get split into 12 even boxes, each one still having the black fill. Now instead, we can add guides as well, which means that we can now force this to create guides for us instead of just using um, the boxes. Now I'm also going to give it a 20 point um, gutter, so you can see it kind of looks a little bit more like the ones that we saw on the websites, and then we'll click OK. Now, the next thing that I like to do is I like to use the group selection tool to get in and just get the paths that I want. And uh, I do find, actually, I have to get in here with the white arrow now that I think about it. And I want to select these two vertical ones. The reason why is because I want to cut them off so they're not associated with the other guides. So I'm going to do Control X go out to the main level and then control V to paste these back. I can move them back up to the top. Now if I go back to my group select tool I should be able to select just the vertical ones. I think I can even use the black arrow at this point. Yeah, I can just get the vertical ones and now I can move those 
so they fit right to the top of that file. Beautiful. Oops. Let's get those arranged to the very, very top. Let me maybe align that to the top numerically. I think that works really, really well. And now the next thing I'm going to do is go ahead and delete these other horizontal pieces. Now what I've done is create just a guide system, and I'm ready to lock this. To lock it, what we want to do is go to that layer, give it our guides name or something like that, and then in the layer options, let's change this so it will not print, and we can even make it a template, which is really nice. Now it's locked, and we're ready to begin drawing on our new layers. Now, if we were going to set up guides for another artboard, like a mobile one, we'd just do the same thing. We'd go ahead and draw our artboard, go ahead and change the width to whatever size we want, maybe 320 pixels tall. Um, our height can be whatever we want it to be. I'll make it just as tall for right now, which is fine. And then we would create the same, we would do the same process of creating an object like this make it 300 pixels. Go ahead and center it. And then I'll do path, split into grid. I'm going to split this in just three. And I might go ahead and add 10 pixels to my padding. Now I'm ready to create that guide. We do have these different rows that it's doing. and We're going to actually delete those. I just want the vertical ones click OK. You'll see it did create some funky stuff over here, so I'm going to go ahead and use the direct selection tool to get rid of those. So you have to hit delete twice because we're selecting just the line. Um, and now I'll just go ahead and align these things down to the bottom so they intersect with the top. And then go ahead and delete the black boxes. Now of course these are not in my guides layer, so we'd have to unlock our guides layer, select all of those, go to the black arrow just to make sure I have them all selected and move those down to the guides layer and then relock that layer and then go back to the main layer to start working. But I hope you find this a really effective way at creating custom guide systems for your Illustrator projects. I find it's a really awesome tool to know about. Plus it's a great way of having a new document where you want to split something like this into a series of boxes. That's just awesome. You go split into grid, and I want it to split it into three columns and go ahead and hit OK and you'll see that I've instantly got three different objects across and that is really cool. Such an easy way of using that tool for effective uh, design. Um, enjoy and let me know if you have any comments. Thanks.